Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting into your world, into your home, into your space. Um, I'm not really a news channel, even though it's called Black Bright News, but I do talk about some news articles. I talk about immigration stuff, I talk about anything that's quite topical, and I put my two cents in. And today I wanted to talk about this thing with the Home Office, trying to trick illegal immigrants into coming forward so that they can deport them or encourage them to self-deport. Now you really have to be careful if you're not um, legal in the country that you don't get caught up with these little advice centres or advice schemes that the Home Office is offering. Some of them, they're offering them in churches, they're offering them in the Salvation Army, they're offering them in Chinese community centres, they're offering them in Asian community centres. And what they're saying is that if you're a victim of crime, or if you're a victim of human trafficking, or if you, if you are if you have some problem with your status, we can give you advice. They had one 23rd of October in Hemfield. When you go there, what they do is they, it's a trick just to get you into, under their radar. And once you're there, they're going to say, oh, well, you know, it's best for you to go back to your country. They'll go a long way around it, but that is the short, the shorthand version. It's just a ploy to get you under their radar so they know where you are, so they can ship you off back home. If you don't do it voluntarily, then they can put you in a detention centre. Anything that sounds too good to be true usually is. I know there's a lot of illegal immigrants seeking advice. And sometimes it does look really tempting to trust someone in government. It's really, really tempting because in your heart of hearts, you want to be able to trust the powers that be. These are the people who know their stuff. So you are more likely, rather than pay for a lawyer or a solicitor, if they're offering free advice centres and you're in that kind, if you're in that vulnerable situation, you might say, well, I'm, you know, I just need some advice. I'm going to pop along and ask them for advice. If you're thinking about asking for advice, you better make sure you've packed your bags and you've got everything in order before you go to those meetings. Because if you're not legally in the country, you're not going to be allowed to stay. If they don't force you to self-deport, and they do it in so many different guises, then they'll probably end up support deporting you anyway. Because the fact of the matter is they're looking for illegal immigrants, so there's no way around it. It's like Boris Johnson talking about, oh, he's going to give um, 10,000 people amnesty. You know, you've got to be so careful of these schemes that seem too good to be true. I haven't even heard anything more about the amnesty of you. You would think that if that was the case, that would be one of his selling points in the election. Have you heard anything about it? I haven't. So you have to be very, very careful, very, very careful about these these little insidious schemes that the Home Office have, you know, trying to trick people. And apparently there was somebody in 2016, I'll tell you his name afterwards, but um, he actually was an employee of the Home Office and he was getting, I think he got over 500, I think 475 to 500 people illegal in the country. And what he did, he used the paperwork of legal um, immigrants to falsify and create ghost information, ghost documents for these people so that they could come into the country illegally. He got caught and, you know, about four years after doing it for four years, he got caught, but he was working with the Home Office. So you have to think not everybody in the Home Office is above board. I'm not saying they're all crooked or they're all wicked or they're all up to tricks, but a lot of those staff members, they are not allowed to be human. They're not allowed to have a human element. It's all about biometrics. It's all about computers. It's all about figures and numbers. And you're just a number. 
So you're not dealing with somebody who has empathy with you, who's somebody who's going to think when you tell them, oh, look, I came here such and such a long time and I can't find my paperwork and my, my wife died or I lost my son or my, uh, you know, my, my spouse has cancer and this you could tell them sob, not even sob stories, it can be the truth. But you can tell them things that would wrench anybody else's heart, hoping to appeal to their human nature, and it's not going to make a darn bit of difference. So even if you have a valid excuse for overstaying, these people are not going to allow you to stay in the country. It's not their job. Their job is to get rid of illegal immigrants. That is their sole function. And they'll do it if they can't let you go so that you pay for it. They'll end up detaining you so they pay for it. And you won't have a good time in that detention center. Because as far as they're concerned, you're costing them money. You shouldn't be in the country. And so therefore, they're going to give you a hard time. So all I'm saying, peeps, is don't um, go to those advice centres. I'm going to put the link, the newspaper links below, credible newspaper links. I'm not making this up. And I just wanted to read a little bit about it so you've got um, the information. Um, a specialist home office team has been accused of deceiving vulnerable migrants by using community groups, including churches, to lure immigrants to advice sessions and disguising its true role of persuading them to leave the UK. The National Community Engagement Team has held 20 events targeted at immigrant communities, including one on October the 23rd at the offices of Enfield Council in North London. The notice for the event, similar to others related to NCET events, advertised it as a valuable opportunity to learn more about what support is available to local people who may feel they are in vulnerable circumstances. Now, if you saw that, you're going to think, oh, it's going to help me. That's what you're going to think, especially if you are in a vulnerable situation. You have overstayed. You don't want to be ducking and diving. You don't want to be kicked out. You just want to stay with your family and get on with your life. That's what you're going to think when you go to these advice sessions. But it's a trick. They just want to root you out because, and so you actually save them the work. Because the way they're trying to find you is long and arduous. It specifically promoted the event as suitable for people who have been victims of modern slavery or other crimes. But emails seen by the Financial Times, along with online profiles of team members, make it clear that NCET's role is to persuade people to return to their home country. An estimated one million immigrants live in the UK without permission. That's a very polite way of saying illegal immigrants. According to a recent report by the Pew Research Centre, in an email to a group working with vulnerable migrants, Mark Ahrens, an official working for the NCET, said the team worked to raise awareness of the harm of illegal migration. His email made it clear, in addition, NCET seeks to support the most vulnerable individuals within communities tackling issues such as modern slavery, blah, 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 BS. The Home Office appeared to be using trusted and public community spaces to trick vulnerable mi migrant victims of crime into making themselves known to immigration officials. Can you imagine? People, you know, they're holding it in a church. The, psych the psychology behind that. If you're going, you said home office, they're going to help me out. They've got advice sessions and it's in a church, a, a place of God, a place of worship. You wouldn't believe that they have devious tactics, but they're devious, devious just by choosing that location. They don't choose that location by accident. They choose that location because for a lot of people, 
Um, my immigrants in particular, it represents a place of safety. A church represents a place of safety. It's like the Salvation Army when you're thinking about um, the asylum seekers and people who have been victims of human trafficking. They go to the Salvation Army and the Salvation Army is there to protect and refer with a referral mechanism. So they would be, they would feel as though that is the place to go for help and support and advice. Not realise that the Home Office is there just waiting to clamp their hands on them, to whiz them off or to cajole them into going back to their country. Anyway, the Home Office is also using information gathered in immigration surgeries as charities and places of worship to deport vulnerable homeless people who are told that attending will help them get financial support. The Guardian has learned that's even worse because now they might tell you, say, you yeah, get money. They might give you money if you got it. Can you imagine how devious they are? The only financial support they're going to give you is support towards your fare back home, back home to where you came from. That's the only support. But I don't understand how, if you're homeless, you know, how they, how a homeless person would think that they're going to help them, especially if they're not supposed to be legally in the country. But sometimes when you're desperate, you think there are kind people. Sometimes, and especially if you've got a kind heart yourself, you think people are kind, you start, you haven't got nothing to lose, you want to trust someone. And then they screw you over. Interviews and internal emails reveal that the Salvation Army seek Gawaradas, Sikh Gawaras and uh, Chinese community support centres are among the bodies that are allowing the Home Office teams in London to run their sessions in their spaces that are intended to be safe havens for homeless people. Attendees are assured that sessions are not offered as a part of an enforcement approach to immigration cases and told that they are taking part might help them regularise their status, but it's not true. So can you imagine? They're also telling them that it's not part of an enforcement process. So when you are going to these advice centres, they're saying to you that you must come and we can give you advice. Don't worry, we're not enforcing any deportation. We're not enforcing you to go home. And on top of that, we're going to give you money. We're going to give you financial aid. You're going to be running there, aren't you? And it's a trick. I think it's absolutely disgusting. And then they're talking about they'll help them regularise their status. Anybody, if they know how the Home Office works, you can't regularise your status if you've overstayed more than 14 days. No way. Worse if you're homeless and you can't contribute to the economy. Worse. All I'm saying is, well, if you're homeless, you're probably not even watching this. But all I'm saying, if there are people who, you know, might not have reached that extreme, but, you know, they're living with a relative or they're living with a, a partner or something, and they've seen these advice centres that are offering them, offering to regularise their status, offering to give them some money and telling them that they're not going to enforce deportation, they might just think about going. And all I'm saying is, be careful. Be very, very careful. Um, and the guy that I was telling you about who was working for the Home Office and um, got a lot of um, people in the country using forced documentation, Shamsu Iqbal, 61, exploited his trusted position to falsify records for at least 437 people, charging each one £14,000 for a ghost identity. He made a killing. There was four of them, and each one of them had a million pound cash in their accounts, bank accounts. <coughs> Sorry. Um, he was earning 23,000 a year, and was, he was at the centre of a six million conspiracy, which allowed hundreds of, of illegal immigrants into the country. In April 2018, Iqbal and three others were involved in the scam. They were also found guilty. They face a maximum sentence of 14 years in jail. However, exactly how many immigrants 
were given ghost identity, identities may never be known. When the ringleader Iqbal was arrested, investigation investigated so investigators found bank accounts containing more than a million in cash. Prosecutors explained how Iqbal would access home office records of migrants who had been granted the right to stay in Britain and swap them for details of imposters. What I was wondering, how does that impact the, the people who were granted a right to stay in Britain if they have swapped those information, that information, for people who are imposters. What does that, how does that translate for those people whose information he used? Does that mean that there are people going around, or who people think that they're legitimate in the country, but in fact they are being seen as being illegal, because this guy has used their authentic documentation to give to these people who's been paying them £14,000. What's the implications of that? That's kind of scary, isn't it? Investigators with the Home Office Anti-Corruption Unit spent three years identifying at least 437 cases of documents being faked the ghost imposter would get a new identity of a real migrant who had either been given leave to remain or no time limit status to stay in Britain. So when he swapped those that information, does that mean that there are 437 people in the UK who have got who have got no status? because he's given their status to imposters. That's kind of scary, isn't it? The deception has been allowed to go on for years. Some of those given new identities could even be potential terrorists. Many of them have simply melted away, meaning we will never be able to trace them. Iqbal's co-accused was Sheikh Mohammed Usman, 45, legal caseworker Mohammed Kawa Aftab, Hussein, 49, and worker Mohammed Abrahim Abra Ali, 48. Usman is a qualified lawyer of Pakistani origin who worked at a number of firms in London. British citizen Hussein, who was born in Pakistan, and Ali, who came to Britain from Bangladesh, age 12, both worked at solicitor's practices in London, so they had a lot of legal know-how. This enabled them to engage in the criminality as they would facilitate correspondence with the Home Office on behalf of the imposters to help straighten out their immigration status, the trial heard. Iqbal had his own secure login to a Home Office system which records details of individual cases and applications to remain in the country. Croydon Crown Court heard the gang were caught out when they tried to alter the details of a legal migrant from Ghana who had been jailed for robbery and was liable for deportation. Can you imagine? That's how they found them out. And have you heard of this? I mean, has anybody been notified? I'd like your comments. Has anybody been told that their information or their status has been messed around with? Those 437. Apparently, they denied 13 charges of conspiracy to assist unlawful immigration from January 2010 to April 2016. <clears throat> and the thing is, is that you know, I was reading something else, a couple of cases, you know, because, you know, they've been refusing um, visa, visas to a couple of people. Um, Anna Amato, Italian woman who lived in the UK for 52 of her 55 years. They refused her visa. And remember Hubert Howard, who died three weeks after being granted British citizenship, 59 years after arriving in the UK as part of the Windrush generation. 
there's so many ways what they're saying is there's so many ways that the home office makes immigrants feel unwelcome and unsafe and what i'm saying if nobody's been notified that their documents have been tampered with what does that tell you I just think it's a bit scary myself. You could be thinking, okay, I'm okay, I'm all right, Jack. I've got my papers, everything sorted. And yet that bloke, he could have taken your proper documents and swapped them for an imposter. And that imposter now, you have that imposter's documents. I'll tell you something, this world, I dread me, I tell you. Anyway, that's all for now. Bye-bye.